Most of the new cases we take a look at here at KitGuru come with a review guide in one form or another. A lot of the time those review guides can be a little boring to read and often they just reiterate features that we've seen in cases for many years. However, the review guide that came with this new Lian Li Lancool 216 contained some really interesting features that made me really excited to take a look at this case. But it's one thing writing it down on paper, we want to find out if those features really work in the real world. So stick around and hopefully we'll find out. So let's get straight into the nitty gritty then of this case. The Lian Li Lankol 216 is a pretty conventional looking mid-tower ATX chassis. You can see a lot of it is covered by mesh on the top and on the front. You can buy this case in either black or white versions from overclockers.co.uk. The black one will be priced around £105 and you'll have to pay a slight premium for the white one and that'll be priced at around 110 pounds. The reason say around 105 and around 110 pounds is because the unstable value of the pound at the moment could mean that these change slightly. One of the key features in the review guide for the Lancol 216 says the case is optimized for both air and liquid cooling. We hear that a lot with case manufacturers, but there are some features that actually give that some meaning with the Lancol 216, and we'll take a look at those uh, very shortly as well. So let's start taking this case apart and have a look and see how it's put together and what you actually get for your £105. So to remove the uh, tempered glass side panel, it's a single thumb screw on the back that you just need to undo and then there's a little tab and you just push it outwards and the tempered glass side panel comes off. There is a slight tint to that side panel and there was some film on one side and there is another film to peel off on this side as well. And as you can see with that film peeled off, there is a slight tint to the tempered glass. The uh, front panel is almost completely covered in this fine mesh as well. So we should have good airflow in from the front of the case. There is also a bit of mesh that extends towards the top IO as well. I think that's mainly for aesthetic purposes, but possibly it will let a bit more airflow through. To remove this front panel, it's quite easy give it a pull at the bottom and then that comes out. You can see the uh, fine mesh on there as well. Because that mesh is pretty fine, there isn't actually a dust filter in front of these front fans and the case relies on the mesh picking up the most of the dust. As I say, it is quite a fine mesh, so I think it will catch a lot of the dust, but the, the fine dust particles will probably get through that. So you might find a bit of dust build up inside this PC. With the front panel removed, you can see there are two 160 millimeter ARGB PWM fans that come pre-installed in the case. They come with these big plastic shrouds on it as well. I'm not exactly sure what that's for. It doesn't really say in the review guide, but I'm guessing they are to help with the static pressure and the airflow through the fans. So there's no turbulence around the side of the fans, perhaps. The RGB lighting effects are controlled by a simple controller inside the case that comes with it. And you can also see there's some thumb screws around this. So you remove all these thumb screws There's actually one thumb screw that was missing from this uh, sample of mine. However, this is an early review sample and I wouldn't expect that to be missing on retail models. So if we just remove the uh, last thumb screw, you'll see that when we get this out, you can remove the whole front fan bracket. See that just quite easily lifts out there and that makes it easier to install radiators and fans or whatever you want to do with this. As you can see this front fan mount is actually made up of two brackets and it utilizes the same mounted holes no matter which fans you want to use in there. So if you say you want to install some smaller 140 or 120 millimeter fans you just use these same brackets screw them directly to the fans and there's actually a series of mounting holes in the chassis so if you've got smaller fans you use the holes closer to the center. On the front IO we've got two USB type A ports, a single USB type C port and then a combined 3.5 millimeter audio jack for headphones and microphones. There's also a reset button up here and there's also the power button up here as well. You'll notice on the side of the case as well there's this plastic trim 
that looks identical in shape to the front IO and there's a reason for that because you can actually change the position of the front IO so if you've got your case mounted or sat on the floor underneath your desk you'll probably want to have the front IO up at the top here but if you've got your case next to your monitor up on your desk you might want to have the front IO at the side here which probably will make it easier for plugging in USB ports and things like that so I like that feature I think that's a really useful feature to have also there is an accessory for the uh, Lancol 216 this is an optional accessory and it costs $13.99 that price I quoted is US dollars I expect it to be the same or a very similar amount when converted to GB pounds this is a USB and ARGB hub so there's another two USB type A ports on here and there's also two separate RGB lighting controls on here and they allow you to control the RGB lighting on the fan separately so the outer ring and the actual RGB lighting on the fan blade can be controlled separately with these two sets of RGB lighting switches and again that can be installed either up at the top here in place of the front IO if you've got the front IO at the bottom or you can install that hub down at the side there as well so that might be a useful accessory for people that want to plug a lot of USB type A's into the front and want to have more control over the RGB lighting effects. Just like the front panel the top of the Lancol 216 is mesh as well there's two captive thumb screws at the back and you can slide the top panel backwards and it releases you can see again the uh, the important area of that panel is mesh so it should have plenty of airflow coming from the front and out at the top and also the actual fan bracket that's removable as well there's just two screws that you need to take out so one at the back and one at the front they're not thumb screws these are just standard phillips head screws just remove those two screws and the whole panel again removes like it does at the front also like the front of the case on this top bracket you can fit up to 320 mil fans or to 140 mil fans you can also fit in here up to a 360 mil radiator and that includes a 280 and a 240 or even a 120 there's also a couple of little metal brackets you can see the screw to this top mount and they are to allow you to pass the uh, wiring for these fans through this bracket over this bracket i should say and then down to the back compartment of the case uh, to tidy up the cable management so in terms of motherboard support in here you can install up to an eATX form factor motherboard so obviously that includes ATX micro ATX and mini ATX as well if you are installing an eATX motherboard there's a nice feature as well with these cable grommets this panel actually is removable and you can spin it as well so currently in its position that it's in now that's for uh, up to an ATX motherboard but if you just uh, remove these three screws install an EATX motherboard you can spin that round so the cable grommets are pushed out towards the front of the case and they don't interfere with the motherboard so that's a nice feature the Lancol 216 is optimized for both air and liquid cooling we often hear this from case manufacturers with no real substance to back up the claims but the Lancol 216 is different because you can see there are two sets of motherboard standoffs so there's one with an up arrow one with a down arrow if you uh, want to use liquid cooling you'll be wanting to install the motherboard on these lower standoffs that allows a bit more space at the top of the case for a radiator to be installed but if you want to use an air cooler on the cpu you want to use the uppermost mounting points and that also means you'll have to switch the orientation of the rear io as well a few screws take them out and the plate can be switched to accommodate the higher motherboard placement by utilizing the uppermost mounting points you can fit your big air coolers in here and still allow you to have a vertically mounted graphics card as well so that's another nice feature to see inside this case and uh, you'll be saying well what if i want to mount my graphics card vertically well you can do that in this case because you just need to take out four screws from the back then you can remove the whole PCIe rear IO cutouts and then pop them back in and screw them in position for vertical mounting the case features a full power supply shroud unlike a lot of cases that are solid this one is actually made out of the same kind of mesh 
as the top and the front panel because on the top of the power supply shroud there's two brackets to allow you to install 120 mil fans and if you've got the motherboard mounted in the upper position you can actually fit 240 mil fans on there the simple reason for these are to allow airflow in through the power supply and provide some additional airflow to the graphics card another nice feature with the case as well is this front of this power supply shroud is removable there's just one screw that you take out and then the panel just slides backwards again it's a nice fit if you've uh, installed a modular power supply and then you want to plug in additional cables you've got access from both the back and the front as well so you shouldn't have to you know remove all the power supply to get some more cables plugged in so that's another nice feature that i like to see on this case as well as the 260 millimeter argb fans that come in the front of the case pre-installed at the back is just a plain black 140 millimeter high airflow pwm fan in terms of cable grommets there are two in the main cutouts down the side of the motherboard there's more cutouts to pass cables through at the top here one at the top corner and then two on top of the power supply shroud but none of those have the uh, cable grommets installed rear of the case is a very conventional layout with a fan mount at the top 140 mil fan comes pre-installed you can alternatively fit a 120 mil fan in there rear io cutout that is rotatable depending on how you have the motherboard installed again pcie slots they are also rotatable for vertical or horizontal mounting and then at the bottom is the power supply shroud cutout an accessory that comes with the case is this fan mount this is to mount a 120 mil fan so you just pop your fan into that screw it in position as you would do normally and then this actually mounts to the back of the case here now Lee and Lee claims that this is to help improve airflow from the GPU so to help exhaust warm air out of the back of the system from the graphics card I've not seen any claims of how this improves GPU temperature but I will try and find out myself during my thermal testing later so once I've got the system built I'll install this fan and see if this does improve GPU temperature at all. The other side panel is just a plain solid steel side panel. There's no screws that hold this in position at all. There's just a tab at the back that you push to release the side panel from its locking pins. And as you can see, that is just a plain steel panel. There's no sound editing material on that at all. Inside this compartment, you have some storage options. So underneath the power supply shroud, you've got a couple of 3.5 inch drive bays. These also can accommodate 2.5 inch drives as well. They pull out tool free. You can also remove this by just lifting the tab. You can, if you want to remove it completely, or there's a series of different cutouts as well there and brackets that you can move the position of this so if you want to install the radiator at the front you can move this further back but if you want more space for cables then you can move this to the front or you can remove it completely I think these also do come apart as well so if you just if you just wanted one of those in there you can just have one of the uh, cages installed. As you can see with the uh, dry bay removed, there's loads of space underneath the power supply shroud. And as I said earlier, you can get access from both sides into the power supply shroud, into the cable. So that's good if you want to connect more cables to the power supply. There seems to be good cable management features as well here. You've got a central cable management area here with big Velcro straps for the main 24 pin cables and your PCIe cables. Up the side here, there's also some clips that hold the uh, EPS power cables in place so it should be nice to route them up there as well. There's a couple of other storage options as well at the back here so here are two 2.5 inch mounts so you can mount SSDs in there. Screws are not captive these just slide upwards and remove so you screw your SSD drive to that pop it back on slide it down and then reinstall the screw so that looks pretty simple except for the non-captive thumb screws as i've already said you've got plenty of cable cutouts as well there's a few at the front here a couple up at the top those under the power supply shroud and then obviously the main ones that have the grommets down the center of the case also you've got the uh, pwm fan controller there so that'll control fan speed and also the rgb lighting effects and then if we just take a quick look at the bottom of the case, there's not a lot to talk about here. There's four plastic feet with anti-vibration rubbers. They're quite shallow, these feet. Probably only give you about 50 millimeters of ground clearance. Should be enough for airflow into the power supply fan. At the front, here are the cutouts for that 
drive cage so that allows you to move it backwards and forwards depending on your orientation inside and then at the rear is a dust filter for the power supply and then that just slides out from the back so it's easy to remove for cleaning. So I think that's all the important information about the Lanco 216 covered. If there is anything I've missed, you can always head over to the Kit Guru site. The review page for the 216 will be on there and there'll be a full spec sheet on there. Also, if there's any questions about anything I might have missed out, let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer your queries. And also while you're there, if you've enjoyed watching the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But now, um, as you probably know, if you've seen my other case reviews, I like to always build a system inside the case. It's the best way, I think, to test what the case is like to use in the real world. So before I get onto the build, I just want to show you the specifications of the system. So the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, not the X3D with 3D vCache, this is just the 5800X. Motherboard is this X570 Aorus Elite from Gigabyte. For graphics, I'm gonna be using this RTX 3080 Aorus Master. So a nice big chunky graphics card. It should just be able to test out how much graphics card you can fit in that system with this because it is a big card. In terms of memory, I'm using the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL. This is a 32 gigabyte kit, four by eight gigabyte DIMMs and it's uh, DDR4, 3600 megahertz. Storage, I'm using the PNY XLR8 Gaming CS3040, one terabyte PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive. And then powering the system is the Seasonic Focus PX850. So this is an 850 watt 80 plus platinum power supply. And then for the CPU cooler, it's the Lian Li Galahad AO 360. So a triple fan. 360 millimeter all in one liquid cooler. Nice looking cooler that is. And then if I want to add some additional fans, I've got a few of these Lian Li Unifan SL120s. These are the V2, so the latest revised version with the new connector. So I might use a few of those on that rear GPU fan mounting bracket thing and maybe also on top of the power supply shroud as well. So let's get on with building the system.
So build's complete. I'm happy with how it's turned out. I think it looks really nice. In terms of using the case to build a system in, I can't really fault it at all. All the built-in features, such as the cable management around the back of the case, the removable mounting brackets for the fans and things like that. Choice of IO placement as well, either at the top or the front. I think that's an excellent feature. I actually ended up installing the uh, optional USB and ARGB controller down at the bottom there. The reason for that is Without installing that, you don't have much control over the RGB. It's not like you can use the reset button on the front to control it. It basically relies on motherboard control, uh, which is a bit limiting, especially with certain motherboard software not being brilliant. But I think that'd be a good investment because it does give you better control, especially if you're thinking of keeping these 160 mil fans at the front. So I like the fact that you can put that down there or you can choose to put it at the top and switch the front IO around. So I'm really happy with this case. To build a system inside, it gets the thumbs up from me. It's one of my favorite cases that I've seen this year. Possibly one of my favorite cases of all time to build a system inside. You've, it's just been thought out really well. Build quality as well is really good. All the panels fit together nicely. The panel gaps are good. The uh, strength of the chassis feels good. There's no uh, adverse flex in any of the panels or anything like that. And things like the... Um, the, the motherboard placement as well. So having the motherboard on its lowest position with the radiator at the top gives you lots of space to get to things like the EPS connectors and the top fan connectors as well, which is useful if you forget to plug in any of those and then you have to do it when the radiator's in, it's quite easy. So it is a really well thought out and well designed case. I, I really like this case, even before thermal testing. That leads me on nicely to the thermal testing because I've done my usual case thermal testing with this one. So it's a real extreme stress test running the Cinebench R23 benchmark and the uh, 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme Stress Test simultaneously in a loop for 60 minutes. If you want to check out the full testing methodology, head over to kickguru.net and you can see it on the case review page over there. As you can see, with the case in its default configuration, both the CPU and GPU temperature are exactly what I'd expect it to be with this combination. Removing panels didn't have much effect on the CPU or GPU temperature, which shows me that the case in its default configuration is flowing air nicely with these high airflow mesh panels, which is great. Earlier on in the video, I said I wanted to test this external fan and also the fans on top of the power supply shroud. You will have seen in the video that I actually installed the fans on top of the power supply shroud using the removable brackets. There's actually two ways you can install it. You can install them on those brackets or you can remove those brackets completely and attach the fans directly to the top of the power supply shroud. It actually seems better to remove the brackets 
and attach the fans directly on top of the power supply shroud because there's less resistance or there's less uh, obstruction of airflow with those brackets removed. And also the one thing you have to watch out with by removing those brackets though as well is any cables potentially uh, underneath the power supply shroud touching the fan blades. So as long as you've got those moved out of the way, the best way to install the fans is directly on top of the power supply shroud. So when I came to install this external fan, I did come across a bit of a problem. With the motherboard and graphics card combination that I've got installed inside this system, it actually populates the second and third PCIe slots. So if you put this in place on the back of the case and screw in position, you can't actually get to any of the video outputs with the uh, second and third slots populated. This is actually designed to be fitted with the uh, graphics card only populating the very top PCIe slot, which it limits really the uh, selection of hardware you can use with it. The uh, only way that I could have fitted this with the uh, motherboard and graphics card combination would be to move it up onto the top motherboard standoffs that are designed for air cooling. I didn't want to do that because then that would have limited space at the top of the case. So that does seem a bit of a shame, to be honest. I would have liked to have seen a solution where this can be fitted with the motherboard lower down and with the graphics card populating the second and third slots because the majority of hardware on the market, probably a few ASRock boards as an exception, would be populating those second and third slots. And a lot of graphics cards as well also have two rows of video outputs. So you've got video outputs on the second and third PCIe slot. The only way I could fit this was to put it in a bit wonky and just with one screw, that allowed me to be able to plug into one of the HDMI ports. I still couldn't access any of the display ports, but that did mean I was still able to do some thermal testing with that installed. And I'm glad I did because compared with the default configuration, adding the external fan reduced GPU temperature quite considerably by about six degrees C. Disabling the external fan and installing the bottom fans alone again dropped the GPU temperature further by another one degree C. And then installing both the external fan and the bottom fans again dropped GPU temperature. Overall, installing the bottom fans and the external fan, we see a drop in GPU temperature of about degrees C which is really significant. So it does seem like a bit of a shame that you can't fit this to the case if you are populating the second and third PCIe slots because I was actually surprised at how well this worked. I thought this was going to be a gimmick but this does, uh, especially combined with the bottom fans, it does reduce GPU temperature significantly. So hopefully Leon Lee can take a look at that again and maybe change the design slightly. If there was some extra mounting holes you could probably just drop this a little bit and would allow you to at least be able to plug in um, video outputs to the second PCIe slot. So, with that in mind, I'm really impressed with this case overall. Even without the external fan and the bottom fans fitted, it flows air really well. It's very good to install a system inside. Cable management features are good. The uh, amount of fans that come with this, these 160mm fans up at the front, they seem to do a good job of pulling some clean, cold, fresh air in the front. The uh, interchangeable I.O., the fact that you can move around the motherboard up and down depending on whether you're air cooling or liquid cooling. It does seem to have a good positive effect with the radiator installed up at the top and the motherboard drop down. It is good for access up to the top of the motherboard to connect fans and EPS connections and things like that. So overall, I'm really impressed with it. And then adding this external fan and putting bottom fans on the power supply shroud, it improves the thermal performance even more so. Overall, I am really impressed with this case. And the price at £105, I think it's pretty good value especially when you take the uh, current economic climate. This seems like a very good value case, and I think it's going to be hard to beat. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this review of the Lian Li Langkul 216. Let me know what you think of this case in the comment section. While you're there, if you've enjoyed watching the review, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru, you could always head over to our store and pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.